Wasco County is by all metrics boring. It is a county that is mostly home to farmers, ranchers, and as of 2022, only 26,000 people. However, in 1984, this small rural county would have its entire existence upended by the international cult that decided to make themselves a home at this small Oregon county. Back in 1981, the Rajneeshis were a small religion that had recently moved onto a ranch in local Antelope, a town of just a few dozen at the time. The newly immigrated religion had quickly grown to 7,000 people by 1984 and overtaken the entire town of Antelope, renaming it to Rajneeshpuram. And while the neighbors of Antelope were not too happy with the new residents quickly occupying their area and disrupting their way of life, things were about to get a lot more chaotic. Even with Rajneeshpuram expanding to well over 7,000 people, they were still trying to get larger. This was due to their recent introduction of the Share a Home program. This was a program where they bust in hundreds of local homeless people into Rajneeshpuram to house and feed them. As kind of an act as this might have been, the reality of increased immigration was not for the selfless reasons that you would imagine. According to numerous persons who were interviewed, the Rajneeshis would quote, withhold food, clothing, and bedding if they refused to register to vote. Soon after this rent-a-home program began, the Rajneeshis began to campaign to get signatures to appoint two of their own members onto the ballot for county court commissioners. These commissioners would have the power to levy taxes, enforce zoning, and decide the legality of other measures. The petition was ultimately rejected for voter fraud, as some of the residents were listed as living in the nearby Dales and Rajneeshpuram. In total, 194 voters were rejected due to suspected voter fraud. After hearing of these alleged problems regarding the Rajneeshpuram location, three commissioners of Wasco County decided to go on an official inspection trip of Rajneeshpuram. On August 29th, the day of the inspection, the inspectors were stopped at the entrance of Rajneeshpuram as they were told they quote, needed to be chauffeured in a Rajneeshi vehicle. Now, the overall inspection was very lackluster as the Rajneeshis had prevented the inspectors from seeing anything that they didn't explicitly want them to. However, upon arriving back to their car, the inspectors found their car with a flat tire, which the Rajneeshis had kindly offered to fix for them. While they were waiting, the Rajneeshis offered them all water from three separate glasses, as the day had been particularly hot and everyone seemed particularly parched. Almost immediately after consuming their drinks, the two inspectors that were critical of the Rajneeshis became seriously ill, while the one who was more sympathetic to the Rajneeshis came up with no illness symptoms whatsoever. Examination of the two at the emergency room discovered that they had been infected with salmonella, a common illness found in chicken and other protein-based foods. But how did it get into their water glasses? Shortly after the Share a Home program began, a large outbreak of salmonella occurred in the Wasco County town of The Dales. Seven restaurants were found to have been contaminated and had led to the poisoning of over 700 people and the hospitalization of 45. To this day, this event remains the largest single epidemic of salmonella poisoning and also the largest bioterror attack in recorded United States history. Shortly after this poisoning, back at Rajneeshpuram, the Share a Home program was beginning to sour with the more upper class and middle-class residents of Rajneeshpuram. There were reported instances of the homeless putting their shoes in the toilet and poking the eyes out of the posters of the featured Bhagwan. This scolding of the homeless led to a large majority of the homeless leaving Rajneeshpuram, either by force or by choice, and heading towards larger cities like Portland or Seattle, which a lot of them had originally come from. It all seemed like the drama had subsided, until the FBI arrived. See, all of these instances had not been happening by chance or coincidence. The Rajneeshis were trying to bring in desperate people, poison the county, potentially assassinate government officials, and commit massive voter fraud to try to rig the upcoming county election. This plan was to be carried out in three parts. Part 1. Bring in homeless populations that are eligible voting age and take somewhat good care of them. With enough encouragement, they believed the homeless would support their candidate for office even if they needed a bit more motivation. This would increase their population size to rival that of the overall county size of 22,000 in 1984. Part 2. Poison the local populace and those that were against them. The Rajneeshis knew that most of the county was directly opposed to them and their candidates, and if they couldn't win over their vote, perhaps they could simply remove it. If they incapacitated those in the local area and made the locals nervous, it would deter voter turnout and suppress it with those that were fighting the salmonella poisoning. Finally, part three, assassinate those that were investigating or in direct opposition of the Rajneeshis. 
The most famous instance of this was the plot to kill the attorney for the District of Oregon. The plot was at the face of actual murder, when internal political struggles among the Rajneeshis, along with a concerned member of the assassination team, helped to convince the leader of the plot to halt their plans for assassination. All of this was in an attempt to win county commissioner seats so they could allow for the expansion of their land, the number of their citizens in their ranch, and have more control over what they thought was theirs. In all of this planning, members were quoted as saying that if a few had to die for the Rajneesh, so be it. It would be worth the trade-off. After the investigation, nine people were sentenced to prison for the poisoning of the citizens of the Dales along with a few government officials. They were also convicted of attempting to commit murder in the first degree for the assassination attempts of a few government officials, including the aforementioned attorney of the District of Oregon. The sentences landed anywhere from one to five years of jail to one to five years of probation. Now, while most of the focus was originally on the founder of the cult, Pagwan, the evidence from the trial and testimony afterwards paint a much deeper picture. It details one of the second in command being the true head of the occult activities while keeping Pagwan in the dark about what was really happening. The ranch was destroyed by Pagwan after a conviction for his involvement in the poisonings forced him to leave the country. After his death in 1990, the Rajneeshis became more of a religious organization again after the departure of their second in command, which was mostly responsible for the aforementioned poisonings and assassination attempts. The relocation back to India helped them refocus on the teachings of free love and their breathing meditation, which had brought them so much success in the 1980s and 1970s. While cults like Jamestown and Scientology can be considered more dangerous, the Rajneeshis are behind the largest bioterror attack in the United States' history, and this has been largely forgotten. I want to give a lot of credit to both the Netflix documentary called Wild Wild Country for their inspiration for this video, along with the sources, particularly the one done by the New Republic. The links to sources and the documentary are always in the description. See you next time.